You know, when I was a kid many years ago, it was uh, thought that the left, who we perhaps erroneously called liberals at the time, mainly wanted to break down boundaries and establish a free, less rigid, more open society. Now, I didn't think that about the left. Even when I was like eight years old, I knew better, but lots of people did think it. In recent years, however, even the most naive and oblivious among us have finally begun to understand the truth. Leftists on the whole are not only uninterested in freedom and openness, but are in fact primarily focused on establishing boundaries. That's their main thing. This is the defining characteristic of the modern leftist. He wants more rules, more ordinances and mandates, more fencing to contain and control people. It's just that the boundaries he seeks to set are arbitrary and capricious and often psychotically petty. And he himself is always, of course, exempt from them. Just the last few days have given us a couple of examples of this sort of thing. We start here in Modesto, California, a, quote, straight pride march, uh, quote, devolved into violence, as the New York Post puts it in their report, when counter-protesters clashed with the marchers outside of an abortion clinic. Now, it's generally agreed by the media and by the counter-protesters who showed up at the march and seemingly by most people on social media that a straight pride march is not only absurd, but also inherently bigoted. And yet, the very same people who will categorize a straight pride march in that way will also insist that gay pride marches are noble and important. So here we see the arbitrary boundary being put in place. Gays can march, you know, and they should be celebrated for doing so. Heterosexuals who march are bigots and morons. That's the boundary. But it makes no sense. There is no intelligible reason that anyone's ever given or could ever give why it's acceptable to march and express your pride in every sexual orientation under the sun except heterosexuality. Just as there is no intelligible, coherent reason why it should be considered good and healthy for every race and ethnicity to express pride in themselves and their heritage except white people. The left has attempted to build this fortress around the concept of pride and declared that no white straight people should ever be allowed inside, yet they can't really justify that. Everyone everywhere Um, is allowed to be proud of who they are, the left says, except white straight people. They're the only ones who can't. In fact, for them, such pride is, it's unthinkably, brutally racist and bigoted. And this is the rule they've established. And for whatever reason, most people are happy to follow it without asking any questions about it. Now, in reality, I think it's ludicrous for anyone to take pride in their sexual orientation. Being attracted a certain way is not in itself an achievement. Now, I take pride in my beautiful wife and my children, my family, none of which I would have if I wasn't heterosexual, but it it, it would feel rather reductive and silly to call my pride in my family straight pride. Actually, rather than a straight pride march, I'd be in favor of a family march. How about that? Perhaps we should have a, a, a march celebrating the family, celebrating the nuclear family. That's what the march should be. Don't call it a straight pride march. Call it a, a family pride march. Not a bad idea, the more I think about it. In any case, the point is that however silly a straight pride march might be, it cannot possibly be any sillier than a gay pride march. And that, I'm guessing, is the primary point that the people in the straight pride march are trying to make. You don't get to make rules for us. You don't get to grant yourself special privileges. It doesn't work that way. If you get to march, then so do we. That's the point, and it's perfectly valid. The left's boundaries that they set up should be broken down just simply for the sake of breaking them down. And this is especially true as the boundaries become more bizarre and constricting and trivial. Let me ask you something. What if there was uh, someone out there who kept a log of every single thing you did every minute of the day? I think that would be pretty creepy if that was the case. Well, what if I told you that's exactly what happens every time you go online? Your internet provider like uh, AT&T or Comcast is allowed to store logs of every website you've ever visited, and they can legally sell this data to anybody they want. That's why I always use ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN reroutes your internet connection through their secure server, so your internet internet providers uh, can't see or log what you do online. Now, many of you might be wondering, well, if I'm routing all my data through a VPN, then doesn't that mean that the VPN can see what I'm doing and they can log my data instead? 
very astute. Well, here's what I'll tell you. You're right to think that way. Many VPNs claim to have a no logs policy, but they've been caught logging customer activity anyway. ExpressVPN is the only VPN I trust because they use trusted server technology. And you don't have to take my word for it or ExpressVPN's word for it. ExpressVPN is so confident in their no logs claim. They even had one of the biggest assurance firms audit their technology. Stop letting people keep logs of what you do online. Visit expressvpn.com slash Matt Walsh Show right now and find out how you can get three months free. There's a TikTok user who goes by the handle a mushroom blackly. Um, and uh, she went viral over the last few days with her reaction to a Drew Barrymore video where Barrymore runs laughing through the rain. Now, a mushroom blackly has decided that uh, it's racist for a white person to frolic in the rain. So that's why she, now I can think of many reasons to oppose adults doing any kind of frolicking at all, but she's making it racial. And she's saying that the problem is that if you do this, then you're racist against black people, though she's not really able to explain why. Let's uh, listen. (laughs) You and I both know that you are capable of enjoying the rain and frolicking freely without filming it and then posting it to TikTok. Now, you've just co-signed, okay? You've just co-signed at least 3 million 8.5 by 11 front and back people who just go out of their way to disrespect and dismiss the boundaries that black creators have set. And now you're one of those people. So... I guess my question would be, why? Why would, why is it so important to all of you to treat us like we don't matter? Now, it's hard to know exactly where to begin here. Uh, she makes clear that black TikTok creators have set a boundary which forbids white people from publicly enjoying themselves in the rain. We may do so privately, perhaps in our own backyards where no one can see us, but we may not make a spectacle of this enjoyment. And if we do, then we're not only racist, but we're sending a message that black people don't matter. So if you watch that video of Drew Barrymore laughing in the rain, what she's, re- she's laughing about the fact, she, she's, she's, it's like, this is like an evil laughter. She's, she's laughing about how much she hates black people. Apparently. Yet it's not explained why this is racist or how frolicking in the rain could send a message like that or why these boundaries were set were set, or perhaps more importantly, why anyone should give the slightest damn about the boundaries she has set up for us. Now, fortunately, she did post a follow up video with uh, more information. So maybe we'll get a little bit more clarity here. Why is it an issue for me to stand firm in what I believe? Male black creators frolicked in the grass. Female black creators started frolicking in the rain. Okay. Oh, poor Drew had a hard childhood, says the white woman to the black woman in America. I'm not picking. Nobody is picking on her. I pointed out the obvious. But what y'all really are not catching is the reactions. Like, okay. Say that was a complete and total stretch, right? Y'all still went out of your way to demean me, put me down, call me out my name, dismiss my opinion on my own TikTok, but defend Drew and her hard childhood because she's the only one who ever had a hard childhood. Well, we went out of our way to dismiss your opinion and demean you because you're stupid. That's why. It's a perfectly logical response. But, but it all makes sense now. Uh, well, it doesn't make sense, but at least now I understand what sort of nonsense we're dealing with. A mushroom blackly believes that white people cannot engage in any form of frolicking, not just frolicking in the rain, but even frolicking in the grass is out of bounds because black people on TikTok frolicked before us. Apparently, there are black people on TikTok frolicking. This is a, a thing, I guess. And, but they invented it. And having invented it, nobody with lighter skin is allowed to engage in it, therefore. So what Drew Barrymore has done here is a form of frolic-based plagiarism. This is the claim, and it it is, of course, mind-numbingly stupid. 
Though I actually appreciate it in a certain way, because Mushroom Blackley has inadvertently illustrated the absurdity of the appropriation charge. Now, this might be the most absurd version of, of uh, appropriation, but it kind of shows, it, it's, it, it's symptomatic of, of pretty much all appropriation claims. Because obviously, black people did not invent frolicking. They weren't the first ones to do it in general, nor to film it. And even if they did, which they didn't, that still would not give a certain race ownership over the practice of frolicking. Frolicking is open to all races. I myself frolic through fields of daffodils on a weekly basis and will continue to do so. It's how I get my cardio. But this is how the appropriation claim usually works. A white person is accused of stealing something that, first of all, was absolutely not invented by the race they're accused of stealing it from, and second of all, cannot be stolen anyway because it cannot be possessed in the first place. But this is almost beside the point. The boundaries are not meant to be logical or defensible or morally coherent. They exist simply to be abided by. The left erects these fences and walls, and the rest of us are meant to just live within them. As the boundaries get closer and closer together, and more and more things become suddenly off limits, and more and more things that you enjoy doing, and I enjoy doing, like frolicking, all of a sudden, you're not allowed to do anymore. It's a game of power and control. And the only way to win the game is to refuse to play it. So, march for straight pride if you want. Frolic in the rain. You can even frolic for straight pride. Though that may send mixed messages. Do whatever you want. Because the people who set these arbitrary, ridiculous boundaries are today canceled. Well, I hope you enjoyed that clip from Matt Walsh Show. If you did, be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel and click the notification button to get more content like this. If you want to watch or listen to the full show, head to dailywire.com and subscribe today. You can also listen to my podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.